Hi there, welcome back to the study uh, for another Dave's Desk. Um, we're still, uh, in case you hadn't seen some of the earlier, uh, we're looking at, um, we're taking the stories from this book, uh, which is the Jesus Storybook Bible, uh, written by Sally Lloyd-Jones. Uh, and we've got to the, to the story uh, of Jesus calming the storm. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, Jesus and his disciples have been really busy teaching, uh, and it's time for them to move on. Uh, so they get into a boat and most of, or at least a good portion of Jesus' disciples were fishermen before they were uh, following him. And so they get into a boat, Jesus uh, lies down, uh, puts his head down, falls asleep. And you know, you can imagine nice warm evening sailing uh, across the lake on a, uh, you know, warm breeze and seemingly out of nowhere uh, because mountains all around um, Lake Galilee a storm kicks up and it's you know it's a it's a big storm wind and rain um, it's a it's a confined waterway so don't think big South Atlantic waves these are likely to be um, short sharp waves the, the type the type of wave that really easily moves a you know, a 15 foot sailing boat. Jesus is probably in the, in the boat with uh, a few of his disciples and it's getting tossed back and forth. I'm guessing they've taken the sail down so they're fighting with the oars, trying to get the boat faced into the wind so that the, the boat doesn't get swamped. And uh, interesting, in, the, in, in this um, story, uh, Sally pictures this as a storm the like of which the disciples have never seen, which is why they're so scared. I think it's quite likely that for the guys who've been fishermen, they have seen storms like this before. And they have people that they know, uh, other fishermen on the lake that they've known have already perished in storms like these. Bo boats caught out in the middle of a, of a hard squall, uh, overwhelmed, um, and they probably couldn't swim, uh, and they just go down. And so they, they're they really aware of the danger they're in. The possibility of dying in a storm is something that they've grown accustomed to. And so when they go to Jesus to say, don't you care? It's because they're struggling and they know that their life uh, is potentially coming to an end. They probably need help, someone else to pull on an oar to get the boat pointed in the right direction. But Jesus doesn't, join in with their struggles. He changes the entire dynamic of what's going on. He stands up in the boat, which sounds normal, but if you've ever been in a in a boat on a choppy sea, standing up is quite miraculous enough on its own. He, you know, I think often in the age of electric light, we struggle to, to think about how dark it is. It's it's night time in the middle of a heavy squall. The only light is coming from lightning. You know, it's pitch black. The boot, the boat is moving um, all the time and Jesus stands up and with utter serenity tells the waves and the wind to be still. And they are. You know, the voice of he who spoke to create the wind and the waves speaks once more and they're stilled. And I'm just reflecting both on this moment of uh, the demonstration of Jesus' divine power and that's what the, the disciples take away from this. They're, who is this who even the wind and the waves listen to him? They're struck with that question of how can the divine be human? Which is a struggle that Christians have been trying to, to understand how the divine became human but he has. And also the way in which Jesus doesn't answer their questions in the way that they anticipated. He doesn't just join in with what they're doing. He completely changes the narrative. And I think we need, when we're praying, um, your kingdom come, your will be done, as we were talking about in yesterday's reflection, we need to be saying, your kingdom come, your will be done, not what I imagine the solution should be but what your solution is to this situation. Um, I've been reflecting 
for myself on the experience of um, of being in exile from worshiping together, from being uh, in our um, church buildings, and what it means for us to be in exile, uh, and God stepped in to end the times of exile in the Bible in ways that perhaps uh, people would never have expected. You know, the story of the Exodus, um, where uh, God sends Moses, who's been raised in the royal palace. Who would have expected? An Israelite to be raised in the royal palace and he saves them uh, having spoken to Moses uh, through a burning bush unexpected um, they're saved through ten plagues not necessarily what you would have predicted if you'd been as an Israelite and they're saved through the sea guided by a pillar of smoke and fire you know God steps in and saves them in ways that they couldn't have conceived until he did them and I think we need to be saying your kingdom come your will be done Let's see you moving and saving us and bringing us back together in perhaps ways that we never expected and couldn't have imagined until you did it. Amen. Thank you again for joining with me today. I hope um, that's given you something to think about, some encouragement. Uh, please do feel free to get in touch and to tell me what you think and where you think God will be moving uh, through this period of exile. Um, thank you again for joining uh, with me here today and I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.